Like a morning routine is something that you do that will set you up to win. See, a routine is something that you do that allows your life to be predictable. If you are not successful in life, it's because your life is unpredictable. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you are on Spotify, iTunes, or any other kind of podcast platform. I appreciate you watching and listening to the show, and I appreciate you sharing it, giving us likes, comments, and all that great stuff. Now, today, I want to talk to you about something very powerful that you need to implement into your life. If you are not doing this now, it is costing you a lot of goodness. And what I mean by that is, Think about this, if you wanna have a great life, if you wanna have money, you wanna have meaning, you wanna have nice cars, you wanna have a fancy house, you wanna have several homes, you wanna fly private jets, right? You wanna to donate to your favorite church or cause or charity, you can. But I'm gonna tell you what it takes to do that. It is a, a millionaire morning routine that I have structured over time and perfected and I want to share it with you but it's not just a routine there's also rituals and rules so really we're going to talk about routines rituals and rules think about this for a moment what separates a lazy impulsive unfocused selfish broke unhappy anxious person from someone who is purpose-driven focused and service-minded happy and fulfilled what separates those two people let's say everything in their life is is like they're two identical twins one is lazy and impulsive and unfocused. The other one is purpose-driven, service-minded, wealthy, fulfilled, and happy. What separates those two? You can't say genetics, almost identical genetics, raised by the same parents. The only thing that would separate them are their morning routines, their rituals, and their rules. And that's what I wanna share with you. When I look back on my life and I see how I built my companies to the tune of $200 million a year, I realize that the foundation of all of my success is a byproduct of my routines, my rituals, and the rules that I've set for myself. And I want to leave these rules, routines, and rituals with you so that you can have anything you want in life in any category without exception. So let's dive right into it. Right? Because remember, I was that broke kid that came from communist Soviet Union, specifically Armenia, and I'm that kid that had to learn the English language, had to understand the culture, lived in Section 8 housing. Uh, they said I had ADD and OCD. They put me on Ritalin. I'm that kid that was Mrs. Boyer, 11th grade uh, teacher, one of my teachers in 11th grade, literally pinned me against the wall. And, and I could tell that I had frustrated her in that in this particular classroom, um, and said, you are never going to make it in life, you have to go into the military. And the Marine Corps is the only thing that can set you straight. And so when I graduated high school, me and my friend Dave Sanborn went to the Marine Corps recruiting station. And, um, Lo and behold, I have felt flat feet. I don't have any arches, I got flat feet. And back in 1993, you got flat feet. They're like, sorry, man, we can't take you. And so I'm like, but Mrs. Boyer said, right? They're like, I don't know who Mrs. Boyer is, but we can't take you into the, into the Marine Corps. And so I felt like, holy shit, what am I gonna do, right? Now, thankfully, you fast forward a few years and I met a great mentor, Jim Franco, who showed me that entrepreneurism is something that I can do and that it is a way for me to help people, it is a way for me to make money, it is a way for me to have meaning. And so I started to see what my mentor Jim Franco was doing in his life to set himself up to win his days. And I noticed that he would first win his mornings and then he would win his days, he would win his weeks, his weeks turned into months, his months turned into years and years turned into decades. And that's how he built his multi-million dollar empire. And so I promised myself that I was gonna do the same thing. And so I started off with building out a morning routine. Now, I'm not gonna to dive too deep into my morning routine, but I do wanna give you a glimpse of it here. So we're gonna talk about the routines, rituals, and rules. And you're probably wondering, how are they any different? And I'll explain those to you. Like a morning routine is something that you do that will set you up to win. 
See, a routine is something that you do that allows your life to be predictable. If you are not successful in life, it's because your life is unpredictable, meaning you're, you're probably getting a phone call from someone and you're just going to answer it, right? You're probably uh, waking up and scrolling the internet, social media. You're checking in on Twitter. You're seeing what's going on on TikTok and, and Snapchat and Instagram. Why? Why? There's nothing wrong with the social media platforms if you go there to post content and to build your business and maybe check in on a few accounts that you follow so that you can get inspired and motivated. But if you look at all the people that you follow on social media, are they really worth following? Or are they just a way for you to escape your reality because your life sucks because you have no morning routine, which means your day is shot, your week is shot, your month is shot, your year is shot right? And so my morning routine looks like this. I wake up every morning at 5.30. The alarm goes off. I don't hit snooze because I don't have a snooze button set. You can turn off the snooze button on your phone so that you don't have the option to snooze. I just hit off. I wake up at 5.30. I drink my 30 ounces of water. I send out my three gratitude text messages to three people that I appreciate and I'm grateful for that day, that morning. I um, immediately jump into the shower, I get out of the shower and I go downstairs and I attack my GSD list, right? I'll get my coffee, my protein shake and my water again, and I'll sit at the kitchen counter and I'll attack my GSD list. What is a GSD list? It is the get shit done list. And that list was made the night before. See, my morning routine starts the night before. Successful people plan their day the night before. If you just wake up and go, gosh, what should I do this morning? How do I feel? And you let the day or your feelings determine your day. You let how you slept determine what you're going to do. You're fucked. You're fucked. I could wake up sad. I could wake up angry. I could wake up tired. I could wake up with a headache. I could wake up with whatever. And I am still going to do what I have planned to do that day because that is what successful people do when they set up a routine that is backed by discipline. And so my routine is to wake up, not hit the snooze button, to drink my 30 ounces of water, send out my three gratitude text messages, immediately shower and go downstairs, get my coffee, get my protein shake, get my water, and then sit with my laptop and focus on my GSD list, my get shit done list that I made the night before. That list is three to five things that I need to do in the morning to move my business forward. It might be putting up my social media posts. It might be writing my email broadcast. It might be writing a blog post. It might be sending a few emails or making a few calls to strategic business partners that I'm in business with to plan out our next moves, right? But it is not just quote unquote busy work. My morning routine is designed to help me win the day. And if I can win the day, I will win the week. If I win the week, I will win the month. I win the month, I win the year and the compound factor begins. But routines alone are not enough. You also have to have rituals, right? And I realize that I have very specific rituals. Now, what's the difference between a routine and a ritual? A ritual is something that has, that has greater personal meaning to you, right? So I'll give you an example. Once I leave my house in the morning at 9 a.m. and I head to the gym, I head to BK Strength to work out, I stop by Starbucks, and part of my ritual is that I need a iced cold brew right? I need an iced cold brew before I lift. Even though I had coffee in the morning, I still want my iced cold brew uh, to have right before I lift. And it's part of a ritual that I feel makes my workouts better. Also, I have specific playlists that are dedicated to my workouts in the gym. Very different playlists than I listen to, let's say, if I'm driving somewhere or if I'm just chilling like a villain, right? My playlists are rituals that allow me to get into a state of mind where I go to battle with my body and the weights to produce the physique that I want. And it is very important for me to do that. Another ritual that I have, for example, is when I'm speaking. When I'm speaking on stage at an event, it doesn't matter if it's 50 people or 5,000 people at this event, I always do this. Right before I get up on stage, before the announcer announces me, I'm in the back corner, backstage, 
facing the corner, jumping up and down and saying to myself, I like 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 myself. And as I do that, I realize it just puts this goofy grin on my face. It changes my mental state. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. He says, you can change your mental state instantly. And I believe that. <clears throat> I believe that. Think about this, man. I got all this nervous energy, right? If I'm backstage, I'm about to speak to 50 or 5,000 people. I'm backstage and I'm all worked up and I'm tightly wound. What better way than to go into the corner, jump up and down physically and mumble to myself, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself with my eyes closed. And you say that enough times for like two or three minutes and soon you start giggling to yourself because it's such a stupid thing to do, but it is so powerful in terms of changing your state. You end up releasing more endorphins, more dopamine, your mood changes, and I'm able to get that nervous energy out, and I take the stage and I crush it. That is a ritual that I need, and if I do that ritual, I will get up on stage and I will bring the thunder and impact lives. But if I don't do that ritual, then I've got this nervous energy. Now in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, 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 and you end up thinking yourself right into disaster, right? The best talks that I've done are talks that have come from my radiance. The best talks that I've done are talks that have just come from this place of pure radiance where I am not nervous, I am not tightly wound, I don't have this nervous energy, I'm just speaking to the audience with the, with the intention to serve. And I share that with you because that ritual is very important for me to purge the nerves and change my mindset into one that is positive and calm versus nervous and antsy, right? So another one, I've got a pre-podcast, right? I've got a pre-podcast ritual. Uh, Joan, my assistant, will actually block off 60 minutes before I come down here to, to film a podcast in our studio where there's literally, I, I told you guys I have a playlist that I have for when I'm working out in the gym. I have a playlist that I listen to right before I come and do my podcast. And I have a state of mind that I go into. As I'm listening to that playlist, I just go into that state of mind and I connect with consciousness. And I'm asking, and I'm asking source, the universe, God, give me the words to articulate to the audience to be able to drive this message home, to be able to push this message into their heart so that they can get inspired, they can take action on this message so that they can better their lives, they can elevate to a higher place. And therefore I come into this room in a better state of mind, connected to consciousness, speaking from my radiance, no different than if I were on stage. It is that powerful, my friends, for you to have a ritual. And then finally, rules. I have rules that I follow, man. Look, if you're gonna be a high performer, if you want the best in life, you wanna be rich, you wanna be successful, you wanna be jacked, you wanna have a great life, you wanna have a legacy, you need rules as well, in addition to your routines and your rituals. For example, a rule that I have is I'd never answer unscheduled calls, period. If my phone rings, I see it, I don't recognize the phone number, or I recognize the phone number, and it's not a family member, meaning my wife and my kids, or it's not a coaching client that's scheduled to call me that day or that moment, I don't pick it up. Everything goes to voicemail. Because if I'm doing something, and I pick up a random phone call from someone, that random phone call might lead me to a different state of mind. When someone all of a sudden dumps their problem on me, right? And so one of my rules is I don't answer unscheduled phone calls. Another one is that whenever I travel, and I travel a lot, I speak at a lot of events, when I travel, within the first two hours of landing, I must work out. In fact, wherever I land, I will get to my hotel. In the process of getting to my hotel, I will find a local gym. My rule is my butt will never touch the bed. What is the first thing people do when they get to a hotel? They sit on the bed and then they lay on the bed and they relax, right? What does that do? All of a sudden you fall into comfort and now you don't wanna get up. So one of my rules is when I land, I'll get to my room, drop off my luggage, change into my workout clothes, I will not even sit on the bed, not touch the bed, and I will go and find the local gym and I will get a savage workout in. Doesn't matter what time of the day. 
if the hotel gym is a good gym, I'll work out there. If not, I'll Uber or drive to a local gym and get a great workout in. That helps me overcome jet lag, puts me in a better state of mind and gets me fatigued so I could sleep better. Because if I'm traveling, I'm probably speaking at an event. And if I'm speaking at an event, I wanna get all that nervous energy out the night before, what better way to do it than to get a great workout in, exhaust myself so that I could sleep better, right? Those are one of the, some of the rules that I have. Another rule that I have is I, I turn off my text, my phone ringer, the buzzer, the notifications, all of that before I go home. When I leave HQ, after I clear my text messages and emails, I turn off all notifications. Now, just so you guys know, I have all notifications for social media turned off at all times. If you have notifications on, and I know there's gurus out there that, that will tell you, turn on notifications, turn on my notifications. You know what? Fuck them. I'll tell you why. Fuck them. Think about this. You're doing something super important for your work, for your business, for your family. And all of a sudden you get pinged that your favorite guru just posted something. Dude, come on. You're really going to stop what you're doing and impulsively go and check that notification. Tell your kids or your business that they're an afterthought. You don't want that. So you got to have all notifications turned off. Now, in addition to that, though, when I leave HQ, I turn off the ringer, text notifications, anything that would distract me from my family, because I'm not interested in getting distracted while I'm with my family, because that will send the message to my family that they are second class citizens compared to the call or the text or the email or the notification that comes in. See, that requires a high level of discipline. Another rule that I have, I don't go to weddings and funerals of people that I haven't talked to or seen for at least 12 months. Look, man, if I haven't talked to you or if I haven't seen you for 12 months, odds are we've fallen apart, right? And if we were friends then and we're not friends now, that's cool. I respect that but don't expect me to show up to a wedding or a funeral. I'm a man on a mission and a man on a mission must stay on his mission and will only do what is within his rules, rituals, and his routines. And it's that simple for me. Another thing I don't do is I don't hang out with low tone, low energy people who are gonna gossip and talk shit. I just think that's a, an absolute waste of time. Why would I wanna hang out with low tone and low energy people? What a horrible way to, to spend your time, to lower your energy and frequency, and then think that you're gonna do anything positive towards building a business, uh, changing your life, having a positive mindset, having a great relationship. How? How are you gonna do anything good if you're hanging out with gossipy, low tone, low energy, low, low frequency motherfuckers who, who can't even think bigger than just watching television, smoking weed, drinking, watching football on the weekends. Like really? Like that, that that's not the type of dudes I wanna hang out with, right? It's not. So if you are willing and you really have the desire to build yourself an empire, and I don't know what your empire is gonna look like. And, and, and by the way, if you're like, well, you know, I don't wanna build a $200 million business. I don't wanna build it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. It's just numbers. Money at this point is just numbers. It does, it's just a point system. If tomorrow they said bottle caps are the things to collect to buy myself freedom and to be able to make my life better and give my family awesome experiences and give my friends and family security and to be able to buy nice things, I start collecting bottle caps, right? So money is just that. If you have a weird relationship with money, you gotta fix that and that's another, that's another episode that we'll shoot at a future date. But whatever level of success you want in life, it's on the other side of an awesome routine that sets you up to win the day. It's on the other side of rituals that are non-negotiable and rules that you'll stick to so that you will always move forward towards your mission in life. Guys, always remember this, that average is the enemy, that success is your duty and when you are ready to change your life, you can literally change it by flipping the switch just like that. So thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode today. As always, don't forget to tell your mama. Peace.